Father Al Fritsch, a pastor at St. Elizabeth of Hungary Church at Ravenna, Kentucky. We are entering the solar age with our church and parish hall. And it is going to be uh, equipped with solar panels on the hall, which faces south and gets a broad view of the sun uh, during the middle and upper part of the day. And uh, this will produce all the energy we need for both buildings and we're intertied into the Kentucky Utility Electric System. Therefore, when we have surplus, it goes to the general public. And when we have needs, it comes back to us. Why solarize a church? Well, we look at the whole of the renewable energy economy that's coming into force. And we realize that churches will have an important part to play. In the first American Revolution, it was certain churches that really led the movement in many ways. They were the catalysts that brought about change. Churches that are solarized might do the same thing today with the coming on of the renewable energy economy. That means solar and wind and hydro and uh, tidal and several geothermal, and others, and we're wondering whether these will come and replace the fossil fuel world in which we live, coal, natural gas, and petroleum, and we need to see that these have to come in order to save our planet, the Earth, and the churches have a role to play. The first of the various reasons we might think about uh, to uh, try to describe to people and to influence them to make this solar change is that a stewardship. Uh, there are signs uh, in a church that it practices good stewardship when it watches where its money goes. And really, this solar can do a lot to have a payback in a decade or maybe a little more and do that in such a fashion that, well, it could be 10%, 7% interest, rates and which are far greater than what they're doing if they have some surplus money at this time. Secondly, it is something that people will be happy to subscribe to and donate to. And it's something we should consider this part of the stewardship that we're looking for. The long-term payback can be seen if we look at the panels which are down on the ASPI property at Mount Vernon, Kentucky. If we look at those panels, we suddenly see here's something that was put on 15 years ago, and is still furnishing a lot of solar energy to the plant. If that be the case, and if really its life is not over at all, then maybe there's more than 15 years. Maybe we're talking about 30 or even more. Because as long as you get up and dust them off, and you have no major accident, these solar panels will continue and furnish electricity for years to come. Besides stewardship, there are, other, there are other reasons. And one of these is that it's an inspiration to the community. And that means that solar panels show people that they, we have a group within that community which takes notice of all the problems that are facing our world, especially with relation to energy consumption and the possibilities of global warming actually hurting the planet. So the inspiration would mean that the community becomes a model. And it's a prime place for, really, solar applications to be reaching the public in, in the whole. As you can see on the roof here, which faces out into a larger community, people who drive by can see solar energy panels and talk about them. And what is the catastrophe that we're talking about? Well, it's the fact that uh, the Earth is already facing enormous amounts of energy, surplus energy, that is actually raising the temperature of the Earth itself. General temperature has already risen one degree since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, but it is now reaching and approaching one and a half degrees Celsius. Well, you'd say, well, that's not too much until you think of a human being raising a few temperature degrees of temperature can actually move from being a healthy person to one who's sick, 
or who dies. And this, the Earth, is the same way. We cannot raise the temperature to any great degree. The ice melts, the oceans rise, and we have a lot of forms of trouble affecting the whole world. Well, what also happens is that the public, as it becomes hotter and hotter, wants to take on, when they become more affluent, they want to take on air conditioning. And when they do, you have difficulties. And that is, especially in Africa and India, which have billions of people involved. And therefore, we expect an 80% rise in energy use before the end of this century. Where will that energy come from? If it comes from coal, we are in for gigantic increases, three or four degrees perhaps, of the world's energy stores. So we see that the community has to take responsibility for what is happening in the world around us. And this is one way to do it, by absolutely taking to ourselves the role of doing, of using a renewable energy source such as solar energy. And a third element that we must remember is it's not only for the general secular community that we're talking about, but also to the other churches. We have almost 60 here in this county alone. And these people all want to have a good reputation. They want to tell others that they are professing the word of the Lord and doing it in the fashion which is most needed to be done. We're not talking about just words here. We're talking about being a public example. And therefore, the other churches and their congregations can see that one church is doing something that is not just words. It's an actual expression, a presentation. It can also be an informed, informed way of telling them they've got to do something too. And so the churches are accelerated, you might say, in their change uh, through that in which one or other does and does so without a threatening placing of blame or something upon the church that hasn't reached that stage yet. This is more of a competition in which you are ahead, not necessarily beating someone else, but ahead of others. And therefore, taking a lead is very important. And that is what the local church does when it puts on solar panels. Besides being a stewardship in the local community and knowing, showing a certain publicity to both the people in general and also to the local churches, we know that there is more of a regional aspect to putting on solar. Even though it is only in one part of a whole region, it still is a word that can go out to others. And so it tells us in an area which we had a tremendous amount of uh, fossil fuel use, and at a place, Ravenna, where the railroads themselves uh, were quite busy as the greatest exchange in solar uh, energy uh, traffic that has been known in our whole country. It went from seven, uh, car, seven trains containing 110 cars per day to where we now get one or two a week showing the tremendous decline in fossil fuel production. And it's hurt a lot of people. It's hurt those that had these jobs before, and uh, they now are unemployed. But we've got to remember that the movement to a new economy is something that, while it hurts everyone, it hurts some people very much. The blasphemists of the horse age were not the ones who became the auto mechanics of the 20th century. We know that. But now coal miners are very technically trained uh, people, and they really want good jobs. So many of them could apply and become, in some ways, installers of solar energy. Not necessarily them, but they could do some work in renewable energy. And we should be ready and sympathetic for them in that way. But in putting on the panels, we bring up the discussion, and it has to be brought up. We are moving to a new economy. It's hurting some people. We are very in, much in need of helping them as much as we can. And so it's not that we're just crushing some in a heartless way for greed. Rather, we're trying to work together as a total regional community. And we believe these solar panels will help do it. 
A fifth way of thinking about solar energy is that of the region being the church community, both diocesan and beyond to the whole American church, that when we put these solar panels on, we tell people, and we should tell them through periodical and through other means, that we're doing this so that it gives them an idea that they also should do it. One diocese in the West Coast is actually asking its people to think about each of the churches, to think about putting on solar applications. We ought to do this on a national level, too, because we've got to change over now, and the best ways to do it is to have the church communities take a leadership role in doing it. It also is a sense of vitality. We never think of this as being something, but we talk about it all the time, the right to life. Most conservative churches are talking about it all the time. And of course, they're talking about abortion and euthanasia, and even maybe um, the death penalty. Uh, but they forget about peace and justice as being part of the right to life. But also more is the environment. If we are going to destroy our planet, then this is a form of life that is being turned into death. And therefore, right to life, and one of its greatest forms is that we attack the question of global warming and do it in a, the best way possible. It's not just by preaching or by words. We have to do it by example. And an example is put on solar energy. Then the vitality of the whole universe, the whole earth in which we live, that vitality is insured instead of being damaged, threatened, or destroyed by wanton disregard for the proper use of material things. We are telling them in one way, the whole church and the world, we have to get on the ball and do this as quickly as possible. A sixth reason actually comes from the fifth, which is to alert all the churches of the world, is to think of this as thought, as theology. And here we have something that is a movement forward from what it was in the past. Say a century ago, our great-grandparents could never have thought that we have, could hurt or damage or destroy our earth. And the opposite, we are called to do something about it, and that is to save our earth. Now we know that Christ is the Savior, theologically speaking, and we all agree as, as Christians that he is the Savior of the world. But he also invites us in to the saving process. So in one sense, when we say we are called to save the earth, it is a proper way of say, saying things. We never thought of this theologically before. This is a new thought, and it is very closely connected to what we do when we put the solar panels on. We are saying we're entering into a theological discussion, new in itself, and yet broadening the whole of the Christic message that has come to us from the past. We are not making something that is contrary. Rather, we are fulfilling what was said in the beginning. We are entering into the saving power of Christ's work in the world. And this is something that actually we do, not so much in word only, but we also do it when we put on the solar panels on the roofs of our church halls and churches. The seventh reason really comes from the sixth, and that is it's more than theology, it's also art. Not only science, but the very art of beauty. Now some would say the visibility of a solar panel is not something I like. But we've got to remember sometimes we grow in the way in which we appreciate beauty of some sort. If we look at it in detail, these solar panels sparkle in the sunlight. They actually have color to them. They actually are beautiful, if you want to see it that way, and knowing that they're doing good all at the same time. Now we could have a sort of a glass furnace and say, well, it's doing good. It's employing people. Say about a kitchen stove, well, it's giving us cooked food. And therefore, it has a certain artistic value to it. But it's nothing like that of a public display of solar panels. And so for that reason, we consider this a form of beauty in which we grow in the appreciation of with time. 
we know that beauty is really something more than just in the mind of the beholder. It's in the mind of a group of people, and it's something which, when appreciated on some levels, get kids and those who have held back and naysayers that have their criticisms, brings them forward gradually by gra and gradually. And if it's something good that stands out and has done good for the, the local community, then it's God's creation expressed now in human form. We enter into the creating of certain things, and that's a form of art. And it's a good form of art. And when we see it as being beneficial, we see it as beautiful. And so therefore, let's consider that as something to be considered here when we put the solar panels on the roof. In still a more general way of looking at things, we could say that the churches are an affirmation against the secularism that comes upon our society that really wants to, well, reduce the role of the church to where it's not spoken about. And here we're saying progress is being made and the church is in the front of the progress. It's an affirmation of preaching to not just the church community, the local community, the regional community. This is preaching to the entire secular world. We are not going to stand back. We are going to speak forward. This is like Dante C was Pope Francis' way of approaching the whole world, not just the church-related one, but to tell the public we are in the front line of actually bringing about a new and renewable energy economy. And this is part of what we do as church, as local church, and it has a ripple effect. It goes out to all the world. And so pretty soon, what we have said locally is part of a chorus that is building up throughout other parts of the world too. But we want to be in on that as part of the progress that's needed today. We affirm our faith before a world that is being more secularized because of materialism, and we want to stand against it. This is Al Fridge and uh, pastor here at St. Elizabeth's. We are completing this project. The installation is going to be soon operating, giving us electricity, and we hope that it is a beginning for other churches throughout this country and world to do the same thing.